My name is Richie, and today I'm going to show you guys three essentials within new buttons in Fortnite Creative, and also at the end I'll show you guys a cool combination lock which you can build out of these new buttons. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Starting out first, I want to quickly get the basics out of the way before people start asking. There are three different types of the button which you can select in the menu. So if you go into the menu, you can go here and then you go to the advanced options and you can see the device model. So if you change anything in here, you can see that it turns into a different trigger. So just if you're wondering why I'm using different triggers here, um, it is because of that option. Other than that, there's one setting which we're gonna start out first, which a lot of people ask me about where they're a little bit confused on how this actually works. So the first thing is going to be with the newest addition to Fortnite Creative basically, and that is something that we didn't have before, and it is store state per player and resolve conflicts. And a lot of people ask me about this and what this actually does and how it looks in the game. And basically what it does, it is very simple. These two work together. So if you have this to know, this will not affect anything at all. So you can put in whatever you want in here, it will not affect anything. As soon as you turn this trigger on, say to yes, it will now change whatever it's going to do. And if you have a conflict, you can resolve that conflict with these. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. First player is the first player who touches. Majority is the obviously the majority of players. Prioritize on or prioritize off. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, but what is this doing in the first place is if a player switches the switch in the game and then there's another player switching the switch these players can have different outputs so for example if i go in here you can see that on the screen right now and i switch the switch a different player will see the same switch on a different position because they did not switch it yet or they had it switched on from the beginning so it's pretty cool for uh, having like unique levels for each player if they like have a different advanced rank or something and also the resolve uh, conflict thing is pretty cool to have like kind of voting systems where people that uh, switch it on the most getting the actual um, output and stuff like that. Because very important, you can see that on the screen, even though I turned this switch to the um, uh, store player per state, it actually means that the outputs will still be available to everybody. So everybody can see what the output is going to be. So the state of the lever or the, the switch is something different. So really important to know. Okay, so for this next one, I'm going to show you guys how you can make a lever or a switch, whatever you want to call it, uh, turn it off by himself. So, uh, for example, if you flick it, it goes back to the original state, which is pretty important if you just want to have one output, uh, if you want to just have the effect of uh, someone pulling the lever down. So really cool, very easy to build, and this is how you do it. For the switch, all you have to do is basically have two channels, which are different channels. So the first one is turn off and receiving from. You need to put that to a custom channel, and then you went turn on, transmit on channel 10. So obviously, if if you turn it on that means it flicks the lever down which is a little bit confusing but if the light turns green it obviously means it's on uh, and that means that the next thing that should happen is that the lever turns off itself but if you would just do it well with like if you would do the same channels here it would not actually turn off themselves so you need to have different channels and then put that into a trigger device in a trigger device same thing here you just put trigger when receiving from that is channel 10 that is when the lever is turned on and uh, then when trigger transmit on channel uh, 11 which means then the lever is going to turn off one thing which is important though that you have to put a delay in here which is one second otherwise this will probably not work as well so you can see here if we quickly turn this off um to no you can see so now now so now that we turn off the delay you can see that if i flick this the lever will actually not flick itself which is kind of not looking good and then you can just use a normal trigger we don't have the cool animation of the uh, lever pulling down um so you always need to have some kind of delay uh, otherwise this would not work properly Okay, coming next, we have like a cosmetic trick, which is super interesting. And especially for the antique lever, this is something that you should really consider doing. You can see that the antique lever has this red and green light here. And if you switch it on and off, it turns on the red or green light, which I don't think looks super cool in like very dark maps. So you can see this right here. Like for example, you have like a very antique map where everything should look like very old. And just having lights in there, which turn green and red, doesn't really look that good. So what you can do with these devices is you can actually pull them out. And then just uh, put them just a little bit inside of the wall so they just barely stick out but they still stick out enough so you can actually uh use the lever um this is especially cool with this little like uh button over here because if you go here and then you scale it out a little bit um so let's scale it in this direction you can see that the uh, the, the button can actually be pulled out quite large and uh, you can actually make this like a, just a one button switch in the wall so you can see if we quickly stop the game here that uh, you can turn them on and off which looks pretty cool i think this is something interesting you can also consider for some other stuff than just not using a switch and the same goes also for the last switch which is like more of a light switch you can say um you can do the same trick with this one as well but it looks a little bit weird i say and um 
it's a more unique case, but if you if you can do it and if you can fit it into your map, you should definitely try it out. Sometimes with this trick, especially if you have like more detailed walls, it can be that the trigger cannot be activated. Uh, there's a very simple solution for that. So if you go into any like switch, most of, most of the devices have this by now. Um, there is a setting which is called interaction radius. And if you just pull that up a little bit, then uh, the interaction radius is a lot larger, um, which obviously means that if you have triggers close by it, it could have some conflicts. Um, but if you just need one trigger and it's stucking a little bit too much in the wall, you can use this setting to make it easier to people to reach the uh, switch. So, and last but not least, I show you guys how you can create this uh, combination lock here with the new settings, which is super cool because uh, you can actually um, have this, like you can turn on any lever here and uh, nothing will happen. Like you can go here, uh, use the combination, but you have to confirm the combination. So for, for my example, this would be the combination. And if I confirm the combination, you can see the door opens and we can go back. Also the levers reset, which is I think pretty cool. So, and what do you need to do to make this happen? Um, there's a new cool setting in here, which we didn't have before. I mean, we didn't have the switch before, but we had some other devices which had similar settings. But this is a completely new setting, which is if on when checked, transmit on, or if off checked when transmit on, which is pretty cool. That means you can basically have a state. Uh, so if I, for example, turn the switch off, there is a state uh, stored in this device, but it's not activating anything yet. And then there's a different setting in here, which is called check state on game start or check state on a channel. On game start, this means obviously at the beginning of the game start, it would check immediately uh, what state they're on. So this is pretty good for people that have like a safe device in their map and you have like uh, people can use different stuff. But in our case, we want to activate the state with a channel. And in that case, we're going to use this button over here. So we can flick every lever here and nothing will happen. And as soon as we flick this lever over here, the state of these levels will be checked. And if we have the right combination, we can open the door. So to open the door, we obviously need a lock device. And then here we just do a normal channel. That, that's nothing new for you guys. Uh, just one channel in here to unlock the door. And then we come back here. In here, we have the magic happening. And this is where um, we store our combination lock. You can make this as advanced as you want. But for, me, for my case, uh, we just have a simple trigger combination. So if this trigger gets triggered, um, it sends a signal to this one, and this is the last one over here, which then needs to be triggered four times in total to make sure that the door gets opened or not. So if all of these get triggered correctly in the correct state, then this will activate. So let's say as an example, this one is wrong. So this is channel three. This one should be the uh, circle one over here. And you can see here, channel three is if channel is on. So that means I have to flick the channel on to transmit a signal. If it's turned off, like it is right now, um, we're not transmit a signal. In conclusion, it will not trigger the last trigger here and it will not open the door. I think that's pretty easy to understand. Uh, the last thing that is obviously very important is that you reset after every time you turn the switch on. So make sure that you have a reset times when triggered. And that is basically all you have to do. You can make as many channels as you want. You just have to make sure that you then obviously adjust the number here. So you can have like 15 levers or whatever. Um, just make sure that you have everything correct set up and then you're good to go. And then to reset all of these, we do the same thing that I just showed you earlier. And uh, that is super easy, super simple and something really cool to consider in like, like escape maps or basically any kind of maps that you want to create. And yeah, these switches have a lot of potentials and you can use them basically in all of your maps. They're so versatile. You can even use them in the background to create some different states. It is a really cool device and really excited about this update. Like this is actually an insane update in terms of devices what we got. Um, so yeah, with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully you could learn something. And with that being said, don't forget to use the Richie Tunes in the admin shop, and I will see you guys back in the next one. Bye.